I want family. I didn't have family. You lost the family? Everything. My mother was tortured and, and that. Everything. So you want to start a new family? A family, yes, I want to have family. I felt lost. I went and saw Schindler's List with my parents, and when I came out of there, this is what my dad said. Big bullshit story. <laughs> I was like, what? Both my parents lost their mothers, and my dad also lost a brother, they lost cousins. When I lived in Kew Gardens, I thought, well, everyone's like me. Um, you know, most of my friends had German-speaking parents. It's possible some of the nervousness, there's a kind of a, a feeling of unrest came from there because nobody spoke about it. You feel very strongly about America, obviously. Mm -hmm. How come? Because of... It saved us. Despite itself, <laughs> didn't make it easy for us to get in, but it did save us. Growing up in Kew Gardens shaped my existence, catapulting me, for better or worse, into the world of novel writing and filmmaking, not to mention science. In the winter of 1941, when I was just a couple of months old, my parents, Oscar and Gertrude Lieberman, moved from the Bronx to Kew Gardens. They had fled Vienna in 1938 with my older brother George, barely escaping with their lives. Much of the rest of the family would be murdered for the sin of having been born Jewish. We first lived in a one-bedroom apartment in Old Green Towers at 118-40 Metropolitan Avenue. The war in Europe was raging. Bustling Manhattan was but a few miles away. Yet in Kew Gardens there was an air of provinciality and peace. Located in the heart of Queens, Kew Gardens was a village inside the big city. Almost 50 years ago, I left Kew Gardens, and I haven't been back since. Nor have I had any desire to revisit my past. Yet, for some inexplicable reason, I wrote an article, Glimpses of a World that Had Vanished. Maybe I wrote it for a sense of closure. Whatever the reason, the door to my past was suddenly flung open. We were different. Nearly all the children spoke German. Our parents were all refugees. Survivors from Central Europe, Austria, Germany, Hungary. They left behind their loved ones who would be murdered. All they could take with them was their memories of a world that no longer existed. I couldn't get far enough away, I think, from that environment. When I was young, the last girl in the world I would go out with was one of the girls from Kew Gardens, one of the refugee kids. Uh, they weren't interesting to me. They weren't sexy. I was interested in blondes, not Jewish girls. I married a Swede. That must tell you something. I couldn't get far enough away, I think, from that environment. I became a wandering Jew.
I've only now begun to talk about this as I'm making this film with my kids about the Holocaust. They don't really understand about it. They know it intellectually, but not at a deeper level. And I don't know if I'm doing them a favor. What, you know, uh, so why are you making this film? You know, I ask myself every night at 3 a.m. when I wake up, why, you know, why am I doing this? Try. I th Good try. I think... I think I'm doing it because of the enthusiasm of others, that they sort of buoyed me up and carried me on this thing. I always felt sorry for you. I don't think so. Well, I, yeah, I because I always felt that, 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 that you were being forced to practice. That, that was the feeling I had, that this poor girl couldn't go out and play because she had to stay home. And it's very funny, nobody has ever had to force me in my entire life to practice. I do it quite willingly. You. <laughs> I'm Diana Mittler and Bati Palya. And we know each other since when? I would think since since 1943. <laughs> well, when are you born? I was born in 1941. No, I think we know each other since 1941.